The rainforests of South America are known as the lungs of the world. They shape the global climate and soak up billions of tons of CO2. But a massive boom of illegal gold mining here in the Amazon is destroying the rainforest at a rate of a football field per second per day, leaving behind devastated local resource and irreversible global consequence. Now, a grad student from North Carolina has teamed up with a local group of conservationists to put an unlikely new face to this fight to save the rainforest. I'm Ryan Duffy, and this is Now What? And again, another hole, and another one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sensing a theme here. Let's look there. Some more open areas. I'm seeing there are many here. This is the Madre de Dios region of Peru. Carlos and his team of six protect the Los Amigos Conservation Area, 561 square miles of rainforest. This one is two weeks. Oh, wow. It's a huge hole to make into. Yeah. And then if they don't find anything, they, move they just to pack a... it up and move it on. Yes, they are just making a hole, try. If they find something, they start to move where is the gold, right. and they start to, to follow. This is just one of the many mining sites that dot the riverbanks, deforested, mine dry and abandoned. The region of Los Amigos is in the middle of one of the largest gold fields in the Amazon. It's an area that over the last 10 years has been invaded by tens of thousands of miners searching for a better life. But in doing so, they are taking apart protected rainforests to be able to get to the soils that are underneath those trees. That causes massive deforestation, the loss of biodiversity, and leaves tons of toxic mercury in the rivers and lakes. We've done years of studies that show high levels of mercury in the fish that's sold in the markets in the city 100 kilometers away from the mining zone. And they are unaware of the risks that they're being exposed to. But the true impact of illegal mining extends beyond fish and far beyond Peru. The Amazon is something that we think is over there and something that we think doesn't affect us. It's the wrong way to think about it. The Amazon is one of the major centers on the planet where energy gets put into the atmosphere, where the energy that creates weather happens. And that doesn't just fall back down in the Amazon. It's connected to all the regions of the Earth. And you cut down the forest, all those trees are made of carbon. All that carbon goes back into the atmosphere. We're moving towards a different planet. The climate change is predicted for that part of the Amazon will make a world that's as different from now and the end of the century as now was from the end of the last ice age when Boston was under a mile of ice. So this is actually just one of tons of mines in this area, and this one is literally on Los Amigos borderline, which is what we're walking along right now. They're encroaching on all fronts, Carlos. You can make a lot of illegal activities in the rainforest because there's not enough people controlling the cities. It's, that's the big problem. There's no one company that you can go after. There are 60,000 miners working, essentially, in very small work crews all over the region. Currently, the Peruvian government has periodic raids, but after they leave, many times the mining goes back to business as usual. In 2007, 2008, gold prices really took off, and then people really flooded in there. When you see it, it's everywhere. Yeah, it's in everywhere, because it's hectares and hectares of just sand and holes. Right. Yeah. Mining is moving very fast through this area now. It's kind of like a brush fire, and by the time you detect it, that area could be completely deforested and destroyed. It's difficult to understand that that was before a forest. It's just sand, like in a beach, but it's huge. The Amazon's basin's vast. The Amazon basin's bigger than Europe. Carlos has a big job on his hands, and that is to keep this place intact. There's the boat patrols, there's the walking patrols, there's no cars or anything. Yeah, like no that. cars. It's walking. In this area, it's just walking. We have some trails and. Uh, the idea is to walk just a few hours, but sometimes we have patrols for days. Wow. <laughs> it's very labor-intensive in a 
kind of slow process, and you've got, remind me again, six guys? Six. Six guys. So you go out on that boat, and you really realize, like, the scale of this. What Carlos and his guys are patrolling is half the size of Rhode Island. The idea of, of trying to keep up is, is pretty staggering. For me, it's crazy the people that don't understand that this is beautiful and you have to fight to protect this. I went to Peru the summer after my sophomore year. Seeing the gold mines, understanding the scope of the problem, I decided I wanted to help protect their home, to protect the planet that we live on. Max Messenger is a 24-year-old grad student from Wake Forest University. His passion for the rainforest and aerial technology is providing a new way to combat deforestation in Peru. My first introduction to drones was the summer after my junior year. We had been talking about using them for a while in our ecology lab. I remember the box came in and he just put this thing together. He sat there for a couple days straight and uh, helped get it into the air. Whenever you get a few smart people sitting in a room, you come up with a million ideas about the ways that these things can be used. And so we started to think about the work in Peru. I joined Max on a recent visit to Los Amigos as he delivered new drones and trained Carlos's team. We've probably already passed upwards of 100 mines, yeah, yeah. and not a one of them is, is legally operated. If you live in Peru, the deforestation from gold mining is poisoning you, mercury poisoning. If you live anywhere else in the world and you care about the environment even slightly, it's a huge contributing factor to climate change. And then we are changing things without knowing what the outcomes of those changes will be. If an individual does that, you think of them as childish, right. you know, d taking actions without considering consequences. Right. Um, but when we do it on a, on a societal scale, you know, that's sort of business as usual. Yeah, so... Active line right here, right? That's a pit right there. Oh, that's yeah. what they look like. These giant holes in the ground are the remains of illegal gold mining. This problem is so big that you literally can't understand it unless you look at it from the sky. For a while, satellite imagery has been used to try and monitor this problem and, and look at how it's evolving. But the problem is that because it's always cloudy here, like it's kind of cloudy right now, it's rare that you get a satellite image of the ground. After four flights, a two-hour off-road van ride, and a five-hour boat trip upriver, we finally reached Los Amigos. Tell me they have cold showers here. That's the only shower they have. <laughs> no hot water. Carlos, time. Hey, Carlos, how are you? Good to see you. How's everything? So what we see at Los Amigos is we have a huge area to protect. The drones allow us to go out and look at the boundaries in real time. We've done some monitoring around the station, and, and we've monitored some of the mining out in this area. We're going to fly those areas, identifying any expansion of those mines that we monitored this time last year. And Carlos, these areas kind of off the water a bit are the ones that are most difficult for you guys to get to, yeah. right? You can see maybe just yes, a bit activity of persons here, but you can't see here something yeah. if, it's not, if you are not flying. So with the drone, we can go in and we can see the scale of what's happening. So they've actually built a makeshift landing strip here uh, at Los Amigos for Max's drones. So we're going to pile in here with Max and Carlos and uh, head out with them while they go to do some surveillance. The drone we use, it's lightweight, it's pretty cheap, mm -hmm. and it's super durable. And in three, two, one, launch. It's all designed to be simple because we're not putting these things in the hands of computer wizards and engineers and that sort of thing. We're putting them in the hands of forest rangers and people who need to be able to learn how to use them in a few days right. and go out and effectively make use of them as a conservation tool. So what can these drone images do for you that you weren't necessarily getting from the satellite images? The best satellite imagery that we normally get has a pixel size of 30 by 30 meters. Right. But with these, we have much, much better resolution. So we can zoom in and we can see things down to three to five centimeters oh, in wow. size. Yeah, That's so we can see difference. people and whatever. Right. 
we use the satellite data to point us toward sites where there's deforestation, so each of these red spots, and then we can use the aircraft to go investigate. The drone imagery is already producing results. Carlos and his team were previously only able to monitor an estimated 30% of Los Amigos land. With Max's drones, they have real-time imagery of 95% of the conservation. The aerial perspective has led the Peruvian National Service of Protected Reserves to launch an investigation, and based on the success at Los Amigos, Max's drones are now being shipped to the Colombian government and conservationists in Belize. Images that are taken from drones, which allow you to focus on very specific areas in real time with very high resolution, can provide a lot more information for knowing what's happening and what to do about it. So I think in the States, we've hit peak drone, right? No one wants to hear about it anymore. It's, it's a nuisance. Here, it's a game changer, right? For Carlos and folks who have been doing really labor-intensive kind of hand-to-hand combat, the addition of Max's drones gives them a fighting chance, and, and that's huge. Deforestation in the Amazon is a really big problem, and it's a much bigger problem than any one person can even begin to address. By putting tools in other people's hands, we expand that number of people who are able to monitor, research, and start to think about how to fix this problem. And the idea is that these things get used here at Los Amigos, but then beyond. Max is teaching us, we will teach to others, and the chain is increasing. Max's new drones make the current fleet look like toys. Gas-powered, 20-pound payload, and a range of nearly 100 miles, and they're gonna need them. The prospect of gold has motivated centuries of men to take enormous risks. And it's that brand of desperate determination that Carlos and Max are up against. At least now, the boots on the ground protecting the rainforest have some help from above.